What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was full of software and hardware releases and in this episode we're going to focus primarily on iOS 16.3 and what's coming next in iOS 16.4. And then after discussing the software side of things we're going to talk about the iPhone 15 and why it's going to be yet another year to choose the Pro model, new in-depth details about Apple's upcoming Reality Pro headset and how anybody is going to be able to create apps for it via Siri bad news about the upcoming Mac Pro, yet another AirTag story, and much more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so first off, I want to mention that I did just release my new wallpaper collection, Octave. So this is my third wallpaper collection I've officially released, and it is going to be $3.99 just like the previous two. And if you are a channel member here on YouTube, you will get all previous and future wallpaper packs for free. That's included in that channel membership. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support on the wallpaper packs. Pretty much every single one has done much better than I expected. So thank you guys for that. I hope you enjoy this one. Okay, so now let's talk about iOS 16.3. So first off, I want to say that pretty much everything is running well so far with 16.3, but I'm not trying to get ahead of myself because 16.2 also started off running pretty well and then it ran into issues weeks later so i'm not just going to say that 16.3 is the best update yet it's too early for that but what i am going to talk about are some additional features and changes that i found in the software recently so first off you will see this is a new little alert that i got here recently after initiating emergency sos on accident and it says this right here now i believe this was in ios previously but it never showed up for me until 16.3 so that is new if you do go ahead and invoke emergency sos but then cancel it and then speaking of the emergency sos feature i know a lot of people were kind of confused by the call withhold and release and you know what's actually different from 16.2 and the difference is i'm going to show you guys right now and you can see that if i hold this all the way until it goes to zero so if i hold it all the way you will see that it doesn't actually call once it hits zero you have to actually keep you have to actually let go to call emergency services and if you had the call quietly toggle turned off you would hear it say to release to call emergency services so i'm going to hit on cancel right there but if you did release the buttons then it would call emergency services and that is a great way to kind of you know prevent accidental triggers of this because you have to actually release and not just continue holding it so that is a great new addition along with the call quietly toggle right there which if you guys saw my 16.3 video i literally got jump scared because i did not have call quietly on ios 16.2 so both of those are very welcomed now homepod os 16.3 and tvos 16.3 were actually released a day after ios 16.3 so your homepod should be updated now you know it did come a little bit later and you should have this new temperature sensor there if you do have a home pod mini you should see that populate now I know I had a lot of questions people asking why they didn't get the update that is why now the home architecture upgrade has not been released here in 16.3 so as you guys know that was pulled in iOS 16.2 because it caused so many issues you can see mine are still messed up it still says configuring right there and I'm still having issues in the home application ever since that you know architecture upgrade now Apple did say that's coming later they just said later they didn't say when but I am assuming that iOS and HomePod OS 16.4 will include the re-release of that home architecture upgrade. So the first beta of iOS 16.4 and HomePod OS 16.4 should be out soon. I will talk about that in a little bit, but the home architecture upgrade could be included in that first beta. Hopefully it will be. Now this update also includes several security patches. So you can see right here on Apple's release notes, the security content of 16.3, it does show all of the bugs that have been patched. So you can see multiple kernel bugs, we have maps safari screen time weather webkit all types of vulnerabilities have been addressed in 16.3 and that should be great for you know added security for your device you're not susceptible to these vulnerabilities although i will say that none of them have been actively exploited so you're probably safe still on 16.2 to be honest and i've also had a lot of questions lately on the security keys feature so this of course is the headlining feature in 16.3 which is going to give you the most secure way to kind of lock down your apple id account with physical security keys now you do need two of them and i talked about that in my what's new video but apple did just recently post a support document outlining everything about this feature how it works 
what keys they recommend and everything. So I will leave that linked in the description below. It's a pretty good read. Now I did also want to talk about iOS 17 and some recent rumors that have been floating around that are just completely false. So first off, iOS 17 development is underway, but it's in its alpha stage and it's, you know, just Apple employees who are testing it right now. But earlier this week, there were fake rumors floating around social media claiming to have details on iOS 17 features. But, you know, as with every year, it's pretty much impossible to actually leak software features. Even Mark Gurman is like has hardly ever leaked any software features until like a week before the software gets released. So don't believe anything you see online as far as iOS 17 leaks and rumors. By now, we've learned that pretty much none of them can be trusted, especially this far out. The only time I would even consider any iOS 17 leak or rumor to be somewhat true is if it comes like within a month of iOS 17 getting released and if it comes from a trusted source like a Mark Gurman or somebody like that. So please stop retweeting and following these fake leakers online. So as far as battery life and performance goes, both have been actually pretty strong here on 16.3. So I have been using 16.3 on my main device and my test device ever since it was released earlier this week and everything has been great so far. I mean, I've really seen no bad reports of battery life aside from the people who just say that every single update. So, you know, a lot of people had issues with battery life in 16.2, but they're saying that 16.3 has fixed it. However, like I mentioned earlier, don't be too positive about it yet. Just give it a couple of weeks and see if it stays good because 16.2 when it first launched was excellent, but it started getting really bad for some reason after like a week or two. So we'll have to wait and see, but so far everything is fine. I really don't have much to talk about here because everything is just solid now if you're somebody with an older device that's not on ios 16 apple did also release two additional software updates this past week and that's kind of why i put in the title more than meets the eye because a lot of people weren't really talking about these software updates so we got ios 12.5.7 for iphone 5s 6 and 6 plus and also 15.7.3 for 6s 6s plus and 7 and 7 plus now the reason 12.5.7 was released was to patch up a webkit bug that was being actively exploited on all iOS versions prior to 15.1. So the fact that this was a WebKit bug that was being actively exploited means that you should probably go ahead and update if you are still on iOS 12. And then as for iOS 15.7.3, there are five security patches in this update. Now there are no new features, but there are multiple security patches. There are two for the kernel, one for mail exchange, one for maps, and one for screen time. Now luckily none of these were being actively exploited but still it is worth updating if you are still on iOS 15 and you never upgraded to iOS 16. Okay so now let's talk about what to expect next. So next up is going to be iOS 16.4 beta 1 and I would expect that to be released next week. So I believe that it's probably going to be on Tuesday or even Wednesday is when we will see that release of 16.4 beta 1. Now in February, we should see iOS 16.3.1 to patch up some issues in iOS 16.3, or if any security vulnerabilities come about that need to be addressed, you know, many different reasons why 16.3.1 could come, but I would expect that sometime in February. And the reason I say that is because 16.4 is not expected until March. And that's probably a good reason why Apple skipped this week and they didn't release a beta this week is because we're still so far away from 16.4 actually launching and for those asking about 16.4 yes that is the release that should have the new emoji in it and hopefully we do get new wallpapers and things like that as well but time will tell also March is a hot month for Apple products so we could even see more new Apple products get unveiled that month as well so hopefully we see that all right so now let's move on to the latest Apple news and let's start with iPhone 15 more specifically the 15 Pro because we are now hearing that the design is going to be different from the 14 Pro. According to leaker Shrimp Apple Pro, the iPhone 15 Pro models will have thinner, curved bezels that will be more similar to an Apple Watch. He said this on Twitter, all iPhone 15 series will have the same display sizes as iPhone 14 series. The 15 Pro will have thinner bezels with curved edges. The display is still flat though, only the bezels are curved. The regular 15 will also have curved edges with dynamic island, the same dynamic island cutouts, same ceramic shield, and likely no camera upgrade. So that is a very interesting rumor. And I don't know, what do you think of this? Would you be happy with curved edges as long as the display stays flat? 
let me know in the comments. And then speaking of the iPhone 15 series, it's also expected to gain Wi-Fi 6E support, just like Apple's latest Macs. Earlier this week, there was a rumor about this, but just yesterday, an internal document from Apple was leaked, and it shows that Wi-Fi 6E support will be added, but only for the Pro models. So this likely means that the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will have the A16 Bionic chip, and the Pros are going to get the A17 chip. And speaking of that Wi-Fi chip, it's not going to be coming from Apple this year. So unfortunately, Apple's plans for launching this in-house Wi-Fi chip have been delayed indefinitely. According to Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple has halted the development of its own Wi-Fi chip for a while. More specifically, Apple's previous development for Wi-Fi solution was the Wi-Fi only chip and not the Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth combo chip. From a design standpoint, developing a Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth combo chip is more challenging than just a Wi-Fi only chip. Since most of Apple's products use this combo chip, it would be even more challenging to replace Broadcom's combo chips with its own if Apple decides to do so. And by the way, this also applies to their 5G chip as well. Now, he does mention that Apple is going to instead focus more on their three nanometer chips that are set to be in future iPhones and Macs. Now, let's move on to Apple's upcoming highly anticipated Reality Pro headsets because Mark Gurman has just revealed a ton of details about how this headset is going to work. And just describing this headset and how it works reminds me of what it would have been like to describe the iPhone before it got announced. So according to the report, here's how the headset's going to work. The headset will have several external cameras that can analyze a user's hands as well as sensors within the gadget's housing to read eyes. This allows the wearer to control the device by looking at an on-screen item, whether it's a button, app icon, or list entry, to select it. Users will then pinch their thumb and index finger together to activate the task without the need to hold anything. With VR, users see images and content within the goggles. AR, on the other hand, overlays digital content on top of real-world views. That means users will see the real world through the cameras positioned on the headset. Apple's going to offer users with prescription glasses custom lenses that sit within the enclosure itself. The device will have a digital crown like on the Apple Watch that lets users switch between VR and AR. When in VR, the wearer is fully immersed. When AR is enabled, the content fades black and becomes surrounded by the user's real environment. And then it goes on to say the headset's FaceTime software will realistically render a user's face and full body in virtual reality. Those avatars will allow up to two people to communicate and feel like they're in the same room. Apple plans to unveil this device as early as the spring, though the schedule could still shift. And this report lays out much more detail, by the way, and you can read through it if interested. But man, this thing sounds like it's going to be incredible. I mean, the ability to flip back and forth between AR and VR with like a digital crown like on the Apple Watch is going to be so awesome. I really cannot wait for this. And I think it's going to be a much bigger deal than people think. And to make it even cooler, a new report from the information also just got published and it outlines how the headset is going to allow developers and even customers to create AR apps for the headset via Siri, even if they don't know how to code. The report says this, with the software tools, Apple hopes that even people who don't know how to code could tell the headset via Siri to build an AR app that could then be made available via Apple's App Store for others to download. The tool, for example, could allow users to build an app with virtual animals moving around a room and over or around real life objects without the need to design the animal from scratch, program its animations and calculate its movement in a 3D space with obstacles. So that sounds really awesome and something I did not see coming. So that could be very interesting to create a completely new application via Siri having no experience with coding. So I think we need more details on that, but that sounds pretty cool. Now let's talk about the only Mac that has not transitioned to Apple Silicon, the Mac Pro. And people are not happy about this because according to German, the next Mac Pro may lack user upgradable GPUs in addition to non-upgradable RAM. Right now, Apple Silicon Macs don't support external GPUs and you have to use whatever configuration you buy on Apple's website. 
but the Mac Pro GPU will be powerful with up to 76 cores. That will leave storage as the main user upgradable component in the new Mac Pro, which will have the same design as the current Intel model. The big difference between a Mac Pro and a Mac Studio should be performance from more cooling. So if only the storage is going to be user upgradable, that's going to be a huge disappointment. And once again, that just doesn't make any sense for something so expensive and something with the name Pro in it, where users are going to want to kind of build onto that and add onto that in the future. So I don't get it. What, what do you think in the comments below? Let me know, because I think that at this point, they may as well just scrap the Mac Pro if that's their plans with it. Okay, so we have to talk about the AirTags in nearly every episode of Apple Weekly. It's like a tradition now, but here's a new one. Someone hid an AirTag in a police officer's patrol car. Yes, yeah, seriously. So officers from the New York Police Department discovered an AirTag hidden under the hood of a marked squad car in a small plastic bag. So it didn't say how it was found, but my guess is the cop had an iPhone and he got that alert of an unknown find my device following him. Now, speaking of find my, we also have to talk about how over $100,000 worth of Apple products was stolen from an Apple store in Beaver Creek, Ohio at 6 a.m. by a group of thieves. And while they did get away at first, once Apple learned of this robbery, which didn't take long, they activated the tracking and alert features on the products. And that seemed to do the trick because after activating the tracking, most of the items were thrown away and recovered by police. So let that be a lesson. If you plan on stealing anything from the Apple store or anywhere, just don't. I mean, you're going to get caught. Even if it's not at the scene, the products are going to get tracked down and you're going to look really stupid at the end of the day. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest Apple news from this past week, along with more details on iOS 16.3 and what to expect next. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as always, and I will see you very soon.